Hello everyone, this is Anuradha Sharma and you are watching my channel Eyes with Anuradha. Section 1 You will hear a conversation about a New Year's party. First, you have some time to look at your questions 1 to 4. You will see there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion, only the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hi Sam, let's try and get it sorted out today, OK? Yeah, sure. It's time we started working out the details. Exactly. What should we begin with? Date. OK. When is the best time to hold the New Year's party? How about 30th of December? I'm afraid that's a bit late. Yeah, the day before. Fine. 29th of December? The date of holding the New Year's party is the 29th of December, so the 29th of December has been chosen. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Hi Sam, let's try and get it sorted out today, OK? Yeah, sure. It's time we started working out details. Exactly. What should we begin with? Date. OK. When is the best time to hold the New Year's party? How about the 30th of December? I'm afraid that's a bit late. Yeah, the day before. Fine, 29th of December. And what about a venue? In a restaurant? Which restaurant were we in last year? Let me think. It is Tulip Garden, but I don't think it was a good choice. Why? The venue is too small, and we have about 30 people, more than last year. You're right. So, how about our common room on the second floor? Great idea. And then let's think about invitations. All staff and all students. How about last year's students? What do you mean? I know someone who has graduated already, but still stays in the city. He might want to come to next month's graduation ceremony. Fine. I will confirm the person later. Right. How about the cost? Fifteen pounds? Is that OK? What? Fifty? No, fifteen. Right. The next one is the food and drink. In my mind, it's better for us to book them from a restaurant. Definitely. Which one do you prefer? How about Tulip Garden? OK, and we should choose the menu and pay in advance by deposit. How many days in advance? A week? A week is not enough. I think at least seven working days. OK. How much is the deposit? I'm not sure. Maybe £80? I think it's a little too much. £70? Right. Now look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. 5 to 10. Well, let's talk about the menu. Yes, appetizer first. What was it last year? 
I remember there was fruit juice and onion soup. Do you want to change? Yes, I didn't like that soup. Maybe we can order tomato soup instead of onion soup. Is that okay? Good. And the next one is main course. How about chicken or beef? I prefer a roast dinner. Good idea. And the third one is vegetables. How about a vegetable salad? Fine. What vegetables do you prefer? Carrot and tomato. Yeah, and potato and corn. Yes, I like corn. It is good for the eyes. Really? Yes. And pea and onion. Okay. And how about lettuce and cucumber? Yes, ladies usually like that. That's perfect. Then for dessert, how about traditional chocolate cake? Why not? And ice cream? I think mango pudding is better. Okay, mango pudding and chocolate cake. The last one is drinks. I think almost everyone likes coffee. Yes, and Sprite and cola. Fine. Do you think if we should prepare for some souvenirs, we can take some photos, print them, and give them to all the people at the end of the party as a memory? Good idea. This is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a conversation about a computer centre in campus. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to seventeen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to seventeen. Hi, Mary. How are things going? Fine. And you? Actually, I'm worried about the computer centre. What's the matter? Because I didn't attend the computer centre meeting yesterday. I can tell you the information about it. Really, you are so nice. Well. What do you want to know? Ah,、uh, when is the registration time of the computer centre? It is at nine a.m. to four p.m. from Monday to Friday this week. Today is Friday, right? Yes. Oh no! Don't worry. You can register tomorrow morning. But tomorrow is Saturday. Yes, on Saturday, the registration time is nine a.m. to twelve a.m. That's so great. Yes. Do you know where the registration office is? Yes, room two one four, on the second floor of the main building. Two forty or two fourteen. Fourteen, and you should take some documents when you go there. What kind of documents? A fee? No, we are registered students, so we needn't pay any fee. Great. You need to take your student card and one passport photo. Okay. And on the meeting, the lecturer told us some rules of the computer centre we have to know. What kind of rules? Is that very important? Yes. The first one is the opening hours. I hope it closes late. Right. It opens at nine o'clock as usual, 
and closes at 11 in the evening. Perfect. There is no smoking and noise in the computer centre. Fine. Can I take some snacks? You can only eat something in the lounge. Then can I take my bag into the computer centre? There is a student locker in the lounge. You may put your bag in the locker, so do remember to take a lock. Fine. And do not occupy the locker for more than three days. Yes. May I reserve a computer? Yes. There is a reservation system in the computer centre. You can reserve it three days in advance. Fine. I'd like to know if there is a photocopier or printer in the computer centre. Of course, on the second floor. But remember to take your student card. Why? Because none of the machines take coins. Fine. And do not use them ten minutes before the centre is closed. All right. Now look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions 18 to 20. Well, can you tell me where the computer centre is? In the main campus? Do you have a campus map? No. Well, I'll draw a map for you. Do you have a pen? Yes. Well, this is the entrance and the first building you can see is the teaching building. Yes. On your left is a small bookstore of our university. Great. I just want to buy some books and CDs. Then go east and you can see a small gym opposite to the bookstore. A gym? Does it have a tennis court? Sorry, I don't know. Fine. On the other side is the student union and there is a lab on the east side of it. If I want to join some societies, I can go to the students' reunion, right? Right. Oh, does the campus have a parking lot? Yes, it is near to the lab and not far from the teaching building. Great, and how about the parking fee? Sorry, I'm not sure. Maybe five pounds per hour? OK, and where is the computer centre? It is opposite the student union, between the library on the left corner and the canteen on your right. OK. Thank you very much. Good luck. This is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. You will hear a conversation about a student's dissertation meeting. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Good morning, everyone. Today, I'd like to give you an opportunity to ask questions about requirements and timetables of writing your final dissertation. 
So anything you'd like to ask first? Professor, what about the word limit? Well, you know, generally, the words of final dissertations of the master degree are limited between 18 to 20,000. Oh, does that include words of references? Yes, of course. And contents? No, the word does not include the acknowledgement and contents. What is the acknowledgement? It is a few words of thanks that you write at the beginning of the dissertation to the people who have helped you. How about its words? No more than a hundred words. Right. Professor, when is the hand-in date? The deadline is on the 30th of July. Is it a fixed hand-in date? I mean, if I cannot hand in my work before the 30th of July, how... Sky, I'm afraid that you have to hand in your work on time, unless you have some sort of accident or illness. OK. How do I hand in my work? You could give your work to your tutor at the tutorial, or send him an email to the department. Professor, when can I know who my tutor is? You can check the list of tutor arrangements. Online? Yes, or you could go to our department office to check. Fine. How many tutorials do we have in a week? Usually there are two tutorials per week. How long do they last? Two hours? No, one hour on afternoons. Both on weekends? No, one is from 1pm to 2pm on Tuesday. The other is from 2pm to 3pm on Friday. How about the requirements for the format? You can check the requirements online. But one of the most important things is to have a printer. Printer? Yes, we usually keep all dissertations on file. So you must print your work by laser printer. Fine. Now look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions 27 to 30. Let's talk about the dissertation timetable. OK. On the first week of May, you should begin to prepare for writing. The first point is to choose the topic. Can we choose the topic by ourselves? Of course. Your tutor will give you some suggestions, and you can narrow a topic by yourself. Great! And then you can work on your basic references. Right. You can ask your tutor to give you a reference list, and then borrow reference books from our library. And the next point is to prepare for the draft plan. Definitely. You should write a draft first and then discuss it with your tutor at the tutorial. If the draft is OK, what should we do next? You will begin to do research to collect data to support your work. OK. Can we choose the research methods by ourselves? It is better if you take your tutor's advice. OK. When your data is enough for your work, you will begin to write up your dissertation. How many parts does a dissertation contain? Usually your work must have an introduction, a main body, and a conclusion. You should talk about it with your tutor. And then can we hand our dissertation in? No. You should do proofreading before handing in your work. OK. Anything else? No. Right. This is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a lecture about Australia. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Australia is the world's smallest continent and largest island. It is one of the oldest land masses and flattest of all the continents. After Antarctica, Australia is the second driest continent. Most areas of Australia are semi-desert or arid. Almost forty percent is north of the Tropic of Capricorn. On its western coast is the Indian Ocean, and on its east the coral and Tasman seas of the South Pacific Ocean. Australia is the only nation which occupies an entire continent. It is about twenty-five times larger than Britain, and almost double the combined areas of Pakistan and India. There are three main structural characters. The first one is the Great Western Plateau. It covers most of Western Australia. Much of the Northern Territory and South Australia, and part of Western Queensland. Its average elevation is about three hundred meters. East of the plateau, extending from the Gulf of Carpentaria in the north to eastern South Australia and the Western Victorian coast, is the Great Lowland Belt, known as the Central Eastern Lowlands. The belt's average elevation is one hundred and fifty meters. And at Lake Eyre in South Australia, it drops to about twelve meters below sea level. The last one is the Eastern Highlands, better known as the Great Dividing Range, following the eastern coast south from far northern Queensland to southern Tasmania. Nearly over four hundred kilometers from the coast, and sometimes forming part of it. Their average altitude is less than nine hundred and ten meters, although peaks exceed one thousand eight hundred meters in the rugged southeastern area called the Australian Alps. Nearly a third of Australia is north of the Tropic of Capricorn, and the rest is the temperate zone. Low rainfall and clear sky is a feature of the climate on most of the continent. In Australia, summer is from December to February, autumn March to May, winter June to August, and spring September to November. For most of the country, January usually is the hottest month in summer. The flag of Australia is the only one to fly over the whole continent. The small Union Jack represents the historical link with Britain. The large star has six points for each of the states and one star for the territories, and the small stars form the Southern Cross, a prominent feature of the Southern Hemisphere night sky. Australia has no official or traditional national costume. Green and gold have been used traditionally by Australian Olympic and other sporting teams for most of the twentieth century. And have become the national colours formally in 1984. The official language is English, by usage, not law. 
It has its own colloquialisms and slang, but does not differ importantly from other forms of English, except in accents. Spelling generally follows the British form. Australia is one of the most urbanised countries in the world, with about 70% of the population living in the 10 largest cities, and only 15% of Australians live in rural areas. Australians have a high standard of living by world standards. Australia is a multicultural society, with about a quarter of the population foreign-born. The first European settlement of the continent, by the British, began in 1788, on the site now occupied by Sydney. Settlement schemes during the next 150 years helped increase Australia's population to about 7.4 million by the end of World War II. Over 5 million migrants have settled in Australia since, helping to more than double its post-war population. Nowadays, most Australians work for wage or salary. They usually work about 35 to 40 hours per week. Employees can get paid annual leave, about four weeks, sick leave, and long service leave. They also have about 10 paid public holidays per year. Most people retire at the age of about 60 to 65. The average Australian female has a life expectancy of about 79, and the male, about 73. Most Australians marry in their late 20s. On average, couples have two to three children. Many aspects of the arts in Australia have their roots in Europe, but its Asian neighbours have made a main impact on its own history and culture. Distinctively, Australian trends are developing, and the vigour and the originality of the arts in Australia often surprise visitors. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, the great problem facing the arts was the same as in other nations. Increased costs and a decrease in government financing. But increasing public interest provided the momentum to carry them through difficult times. The Australian government has developed tax deduction policies to encourage greater financial support of the arts. A tax deduction is available for donations of property to public libraries, museums and art galleries. The Australia Council is a funding agency of the government. The agency spends over $50 million per year. More is spent by state governments. The Australia Council Board supports specific art forms and central council programs support research, education and multicultural arts. This is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.